Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. And in this video, I want to talk about how to make an AI that plays a Flappy Bird game. So this is going to be a multi-video uh, series, and I hope you like it. The AI algorithm used in this series is called NEAT, which stands for Neural Evolution of Augmenting Topologies, and it is an evolutionary algorithm that creates artificial neural networks. So the algorithm was first developed by uh, Kenneth O. Stanley and Risto uh, from the University of Texas, uh, Austin in 2002, I believe. I'm not going to go into the details of how this algorithm, of this algorithm right now, but I'll try to explain as much as I can as we move along. So we need three modules for this game, uh, which is going to be Pygame, Neat, and Random. So Random is a module that comes with the Python installation, so you don't need to install it separately but we will need to install Pygame and Neat. So the commands for installing the two modules are pip install Pygame and pip install neat-python. So if you have followed my channel, you know that I've talked about module installations in several of my videos, so I'm not going to go into details here. Before we start, let me run the game to see what it looks like uh, when the game is complete. And so if I save and run this, what we have is a flight bird game that's being played automatically by an AI. And the text on the top shows the number of the uh, generation the AI is in, how many birds are alive, and the score of the game. So after a train sale for some generations, we could see that the AI plays the game very well, and to an extent that it never dies. So it'll be very hard, or almost impossible, for a real person to play this game in this level, even if that person has played the game many times. So this is very impressive. So now let's see how this game is developed. I'll close this, and I'll go to an empty uh, file. I'll import random, pygame, and neat uh, as my modules. And then I'll initialize pygame by writing pygame.init. I'll set my clock equal to pygame.time.clock. I'll create some constants. So red will be 255, 0, 0. Black is 0, 0, 0. And these are the RGB values. And FPS, which is frame per second, is 60. So now we can create our game window and our game loop function. I'll set my window uh, width equal to 400. The window height equal to 500. I'll set the window equal to pygame.display.set mode with the window width and the window height. And I'll set pygame.display.set caption. I'll set the caption as AI plays flappy. Bird. So as for my game loop, let's create that. So I define my game loop. And while true, for event in pygame uh, event get, I want to check if the event.type is equal to pygame.quit. In this case, I'm going to exit out the game when the user wants to leave the game. And I'll set pygame.display.update to update each time the loop runs. And clock.tick fps. So now to run our game, what I'll just do is call the game loop uh, function that we just created. So now if I save and run this, now we just see a black window when we run. And so now we actually have to add some things to our game. So what I'll do is create a background. And for my background, I'll go back here, have a background variable, go to pygame, dot image dot load. And this is going to be assets. It's an image of my assets folder. So bird background.png. 
now I set third image equal to pi game dot image dot load. This is assets bird background dot we're not bird background, this is just bird dot png. I'll set the bird size equal to 40 on the x, 26 on the y. And I'll set the bird image equal to pi game dot transform dot scale bird image with the bird size. So I'm rescaling the image. So now in our game loop, what I could do is before we update, I will blit the background onto the screen at point zero zero. So if I say and run this, now I have our nice background in the back. So to display the bird image, what we need to do is create a bird object. And to do that, we need to create a bird class first. So let me close this. And above our game loop, I'll create the bird class. So class bird, define init of self. And I'll set self dot bird rec equal to bird image dot get rec. I'll set the center equal to the window width divided by two and the window height divided by two. So in the bird class, we set the bird position to be at the center of the window. So now let's create our bird object and also display the bird. So in our game loop, above our while true loop, I'm going to create a new game, a new bird object. So bird is equal to bird. And then I'll also split this onto the window. So everyone dot split the bird image. Learn dot bird dot bird dot bird rect. So if I save this and run it, now we see that the bird, now we see the bird at the center of the window. So now we need to handle the movement of the bird. So the bird can only move in the y direction, which is up and down. And so we need to set two variables for this. First of all, I need to set a gravity variable, so gravity, I'll say equal to 4, and this will pull the bird down. I'll have a jump variable equal to 30, and so this will mean that the bird will go up 30 pixels for each jump. So to add jump and gravity to the bird, what we need to do is check for keyboard input within the game loop. So Inside of this for loop, I want to get the key state equal to pi game dot key dot get pressed. I want to check if key state pi game dot key space, which is checks if the space key is pressed. Then I set bird dot bird rect equal to or dot dot center y minus equal to jump. So if I save and run this, or before we do that, what I need to do is check the or update bird dot bird rect dot center y plus equal to gravity. So now if I run this, the bird will fall down due to gravity. But if I rerun it and press space, the bird will move upwards. So now we added movement to our bird. So next we're going to set up our pipes. And first let's create some variables for our pipes as well. So right beneath these constants, I'll set pipe x initial equal to 400. The pipe bottom image will be equal to my game dot image dot load and this is an image in my assets folder which is pipe dot png pipe top image is equal to pygame 
dot transform dot flip pipe bottom image and then false true and then pipe bottom heights will be equal to 90 122, 154, 186, 215, So these are all the possible height values for the bottom pipe in a list. So we'll set the gap pipe equal to 150, and pipe event equal to pi game dot user event, and then pi game dot time. Dot set timer pipe event and 1000. So this gap pipe is the gap between the top and bottom uh, pipes, and it's going to be a constant value. And here, the pipe event is a custom event we created just for this game, and this event will be generated for every 1000 milliseconds or every one second. So now let's create our pipe class right above our bird class. What I'll create is a pipe class. So class pipe, define init of self and height. I set bottom, mid top equal to pipe x initial, the window height minus the height. I set the top, mid bottom equal to pipe x initial the window height minus the height minus the gap and the self dot bottom pipe rect is equal to pipe bottom image dot get rect mid top set it equal to bottom mid top and self dot top pipe rect is equal to pipe top image dot get rect of the mid bottom and top mid bottom is equal to top mid bottom. So here self dot bottom pipe rect and so self dot bottom pipe rect and self dot top pipe rect are the positions of the bottom and top pipes respectively. So now we'll create another method to display pipe of self window dot blip pipe bottom image self dot bottom pipe rect and then window dot blip pipe top image self dot top so the top pipe rect. So now let's create a pipe object, which includes a top pipe and bottom pipe, and then we can move them. So inside of our game loop, I'll create a pipe equal to a new pipe of the pipe class with 200. And right where we beneath, or right where we uh, put out the background, I'm going to set pipe dot top pipe rect dot x minus equal to 3 and pipe dot bottom pipe rect dot x minus equal to 3 and then pipe dot display pipe so when we run we just see both the top and bottom pipes except if we see here let's look at line let's see name gap is not defined so this should be gap pipe if I rerun this let's see this should be pipe top image and now we saw that we have our pipes generated or we saw one pair of pipes generated so now what we need to do is create an unlimited number of pipes. So what we could do is delete 
this top or this very first creation and instead we'll create a list that holds all the pipes so pipe a list and we'll set it equal to an empty list and then we could use the pipe event to create the pipe objects repeatedly and then add them to the pipe list so underneath this statement we want to check if event.type is equal to pipe event then we'll set the bottom height equal to a random choice from pipe bottom heights and we'll set pipe list append a new pipe with the bottom height so now let's move each of the pipes in the pipe list now instead of all of this I'll delete this for our old one our old uh, single pipe and I'll iterate through each pipe in the pipe list and I'll set pipe dot top pipe and before I do that actually I'll what I'll do is control Z I'll keep all of these so these three lines I'll indent those so I don't have to rewrite code and now for pipe in pipe list we have already written the code necessary so what we could do is move the pipes to the left and then display each pipe so now if I rerun this we can see that we have an unlimited number of pipes being generated and they're all moving to the left so if we print the length of the pipe list let me do that right here print the length of pipe list we see that our pipes keep increasing every single time so the list or the length is going to keep increasing when we play the game for longer and we don't want that so we want instead to make our code more efficient by deleting some pipes when we don't need them and so we'll create another list to just hold the pipes that will be removed and when a pipe is less than negative 100 in the x uh, axis then it will be added to a list and these pipes will be removed from the original pipe list so where i split the background i'll have a variable remove pipes equal to an empty list and now as i'm iterating through each pipe i want to check if pipe top pipe rect x is less than negative 100 then i'll add that pipe into remove pipes by pending it And now once I iterate fully uh, through this list, I'll go through each pipe and remove pipes. And I'll remove each pipe from the original pipe list. And now if I run this, we see our list is 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. So now it looks like the list is stabilized uh, to around 2 or 3 pipes. And it's not growing anymore. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to your channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.